If we were to ask a wildlife artist why he painted animals, he would probably say because he finds them very beautiful and that he wants to make us aware of how fragile nature is. My answer is not quite that simple. My studio has been on the same street in downtown Toronto for over 20 years, although I've spent a number of years living in Europe and the United States. I'm most at home here, among these ethnic urban surroundings. I usually arrive at my studio about 10 and leave about 6, except for the one or two days I teach at the Ontario College of Art. When I first arrive at my studio, I like to move into my work gradually, usually looking through a number of sketchbooks in preparation for the day's work. This is especially true if I'm going to start something new. But even if I am not, these visual notes help to take me from the world outside my studio into a world of my own making. I'm never at a loss for ideas. In fact, I cannot keep up with the number of studies I create. However, some of these will remain only as ideas, while others, if they seem particularly meaningful, may generate a number of works. This part of the process is in a way the most creative, for it is entirely intuitive. When I pick up my sketchbook or paper, I have no idea what images will emerge. They flow out unedited. As you might guess, the results vary considerably, and my interpretation on any one day may differ from another. Among these studies, I always find a concept which warrants development. The one I will choose today is a little larger and more complete than some, but was arrived at in the same way. I tend to, in my technique, paint thinly and therefore put out only a small amount of paint and usually a limited palette. Generally speaking, the thinner the paint, the more permanent the painting. Once I begin, I can very quickly lose myself in my work. A composition as complex as this requires a very delicate juggling of elements. In order to keep control, I try to develop a pattern of middle values throughout the composition, keeping my tones closely related, gradually moving towards more extreme color and tone. People have asked me why I've chosen a theme which is so easily misunderstood. To begin with, I don't think the artist chooses his theme. In fact, I don't even think he chooses to be an artist. One is an artist. It is not a conscious decision, nor is one's theme a conscious decision, but rather a searching for visual images that express some aspect of life that is for him or her special, even precious. As a young artist, 
I found these images in elderly people, mostly female, near the end of their life. Later, I introduced the female child into the composition and finally arrived at my theme, the adolescent female, which is for me the central focus of the life cycle. It is not, however, that different from some other themes. If we ask a wildlife artist why he paints animals, he would probably say he finds them very beautiful and he wants to make us aware of how fragile nature is. I do not think my answer can be that simple, although there are certain parallels. The beauty, innocence, and vulnerability are all part of what I want to address. Like the naturalist who stands in awe of nature's mystery, I observe this remarkable metamorphosis as one who has not experienced it. This amazing change which takes place in the female and gives visual form to these rites of passage which surround this remarkable period in a woman's life. As you can imagine, such a theme is seldom simple, and to create these compositions, which are primarily done without models, I am very much dependent upon years of drawing and painting done directly from nature and the model. It is therefore important that I continue to build my visual vocabulary. This is not difficult because I enjoy working outdoors and I love drawing from the human figure. At some points in my career, I've worked as many as 35 hours a week from the model. During these periods, I will do work of varying lengths, shorter poses, 15 or 20 minutes, such as the one I am doing here. Others may be quite sustained and involve many days' work, both with and without the model. My models are very important to my work. When I find someone who enjoys posing and embodies the essence of that age, I may draw them for years. This young woman I am drawing is such a person. Vicky began modeling for me when she was 11 years old, a little girl interested in art, the daughter of my good friend, the sculptor, William McElchran. Now, some 20 years later, she is an artist herself, married, the mother of four children. We are good friends, and she still finds time to pose for me. I have drawn her as a child, an adolescent, a young woman, a pregnant woman, a mother, and in a few years I will draw her daughter. A complete cycle.
drawing. She was, I guess she was expecting it to be really terrible, and she, oh, <laughs> it's very nice. <laughs> In this next drawing, we see Vicky as she appeared just a short time before having her fourth child. At her left hand is the doll she played with as a little girl. These drawings are the longer works I referred to earlier, which require refinement away from the model, creating rhythms, adjusting tones, and generally unifying the composition. In this series of compositions, done in a mixed media of pure pigment, pastel, and colored pencils, I explore the full scope of my theme. They serve both as finished works and as studies, a bridge between my drawing and my painting. In this next work, you will see the close connection between these compositions and my oils. The same use of symbols, flowers, water, sunrise, sunset, mirrors, cocoon-like veils, oversized bows, Tricycles, bicycles, birthday cakes, and in this final work, which you saw me begin, the wedding veil, the symbol of maturity and fertility.